All right. Our first speaker is um, Nako. He's the AI R&D director of Clova, which is an AI platform project of uh, Neighbor and Line. Um, and he's worked in the gaming industry and researches um, some technology for deep learning uh, as applied to games in the past. And this is going to be um, a talk about a machine learning platform that's going to help you focus on your models, on the important things. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm quite nervous because this is my first time. So, yeah. Hello, I'm Nako from Claire, Global AI Research of Neighbor in Line. Today, I'm going to talk about new machine learning platform of Claire and SML. NSML is a machine learning platform that enables you to focus on your models. That means other tedious and time-consuming tasks are automatically made by NSML. And NSML will be available as both on-premise and platform as a service. That means unlike other cloud machine learning platforms, you can utilize your own machines without any extra cost. I'll explain about the background and design goals of NSML, and then I'll visit the details. In the past, when programmers are not doing any programming, we often heard saying like, do not bother me because my code is just compiling. In 2017, this excuse is changed from compiling to training. <laughs> Obviously, we have some unwanted slack within research. If we could eliminate these performance impeding factors, how efficient our research could be. I just wanted researchers slack to be removed just like disk defragmentation does. Still, performing experiments on deep learning architectures requires considerable time and computational resources and becomes only feasible by leveraging multiple servers and GPUs. These requirements in introduce a non-trivial amount of supporting tasks into a researcher's workflow, such as GPU allocation and distribution of code and data to servers. As a result, researchers often spend large portions of their time on such incidental tasks. With increasingly deep and complex models, increasing computational requirements come along. However, it is often difficult to acquire sufficient resources for training models. For example, to train a Resident 152, eight GPUs are required to optimize the 152 layers in a timely fashion. Consider a case where the total number of GPUs in a cluster is sufficient, but due to bad scheduling, no single server with eight, GP, eight idling GPUs is available, so that the model cannot be trained. It is therefore necessary to appropriately allocate each task to the server based on the amount of resources required. Next to computational requirements, hyperparameter sensitivity of many deep learning models forces researchers to run their experiments using different hyperparameter combination combinations, but researchers usually keep track of the results often in a manual fashion. To debug the training process and get a get better understanding of the hyperparameter effects, visualization packages such as TensorFlow and Wisdom can be used. But it is hard to keep those visualization servers in a well organized way. Because there is no easy way to share research workspace to others, we often see researchers working alone. If there is some easy way to share and replicate researches, there would be some nice chances to accelerate research. To summarize problems we have in machine learning workflow, there is some amount of wasted time, and there are some incidental tasks to use several servers and GPUs. Those suboptimal manual process usually causes low utilization of resources. Also, researchers usually cannot afford to fine-tune their hyperparameters, and they don't have good tools for keeping track of multiple sessions. For the last, there is no easy way for researchers to collaborate 
with others. So we define the, we define the requirements of machine learning platforms as like this. Regarding resource management, we should have better computational resource management to improve utilization and job scheduling. Regarding data management, users, users should be able to post data sets once and reuse them for multiple models. And users should be able to share data sets with others. The system should, should not be limited to the use of specific libraries and should not, be, should not depend on specific platforms. The servers should be hidden from users and users should be able to use the system in a serverless manner by just submitting a training or testing task to the platform. The system should handle parallel runs with different job priorities. The system should automatically visualize and summarize the learning progress. And the system should provide a leaderboard which can compare various models and hyperparameters for each dataset. The system should be able to predict the performance of experiments based on previously run experiments. The system should be able to automatically optimize the hyperparameters based on the performance predictions. Actually, there are some previous solutions, but it turns out that they doesn't allow you to use your own machines. So to use them, you should pay some money for them. And their goal is not focused to make iterations faster, and furthermore, these solutions would introduce another learning curve. So final user experience may be inconsistent, inconsistent compared to using your own local machines and it might slow down your research. And it seems that there is no built-in integrated experiment management tools for comparing the performance of the sessions, so it is uh, still hard to keep track of experiments. In fact, in 2015, I had uh, developed a system which trained the reinforcement learning multi-agent using a PC cluster of 60 GPUs. Mini League of Legends was uh, the name of the environment which my colleague had made for this private AI competition. The system was built only for myself, but it supported automatic hyperparameter tuning and visualization on web interface. Hyperparameter space was automatically detected by the system and target subspace could be defined within web interface. Because I was not sure about my models at the time, so I tested so many candidates by just submitting changed code into the system and defining hyperparameter space. With the system, it took only two weeks to find the model which had beaten the rule-based opponents. And took, it took only one month to implement this system. So I was quite confident that having good system could make the process much easier and faster. <coughs> Unlike my previous work, NSL is designed for researchers in Clare, which is focused to develop new models for various data sets quickly. And unlike other previous work from cloud companies, NSML maximizes your GPU utilization and doesn't force users to pay unless it is necessary. Plus, it will be open sourced. Every data set, session, and model in NSML have a uniform resource ID. Because they, they have their own ID, so that they can be easily referred to various comments like a performance <laughs> comparison. So it is very convenient to play within command line interface and easy to memorize. NSML is designed by researchers. I think it, this is why NSML is so easy and so fun to use. To use NSML, you only need to know few short, easy CLI commands. Dataset registration isn't different from just the copying files. Once dataset registered, you can train your code using the data you have registered. It can be done very conveniently by just giving name of the dataset you will use. You can also use your trained network model as a, an inference server very easily. 
It is really easy to run parallel experiments in NSML command line interface because researchers can launch new sessions with new settings and new code very quickly. <laughs> they can run several experiments simultaneously to distribute responses from those sessions. But running many experiments simultaneously also means there are plenty of information to analyze. Human brain is very good at processing various inputs from many sensory, but human cannot read two books simultaneously because thinking is required to read and comprehend text. So visualization is required to analyze and compare results of multiple sessions without any effort. NSML acts like a broker between researchers' code and the visualization systems like TensorBoard and Vista. So researchers can perform flexible analysis <coughs> among experiments which are already done or are on progress. In, in this black box, there is a code snippet to report the progress to the system. It is quite simple but powerful but to, to make some communication channel between researchers' code and NSML. <laughs> this is a demo of V again. We can add an, a, a, another experiment with new hyperparameter settings. With NSML, you can check the progress of experiments very easily on web interface. Okay. You can see not only simple terminal output, but also images on wisdom. When you see <coughs> this, yeah, is it on wisdom? When you see is selecting arbitrary two experiments and then comparing those processes with the intensible. Code for training a model must have one or more iterative loops for updating parameters. By calling nsml.report function within this loop, the status of, of experiments can be reported to the system and this code also fetches pending commands from the command, command queue and executes those fetch commands. In this way, models which are running on NSML has dynamic control flow. So users can execute arbitrary commands on already running sessions. Actually, users can inject some code. He or she can watch a variable, change a hyperparameter on the fly, Save current snapshot, load the saved snapshot, or, or generate an image to wisdom. This is a demo, this is a video which demonstrates how researchers can use this feature in a virtual terminal on web interface. By typing some Python scripts, yeah, the, the script will be run on already running session. When you see, it's just typing a model, a dump of a model using PyTorch. Yeah, you can call save function and load, load function on the fly. You can use all features <coughs> NSM not only on web interface, but you can also use them within CRI. In fact, advanced, advanced features like Inference servers are using this CLI as a, a low-level API. <coughs> researchers can use his or her own workspace whatever he or she wants. Any Docker images could be used and NSML supports standard Python setup and requirements scripts so that it is, it is very easy to set up, machine, set up machine learning workspace. Because we just didn't want to introduce other things to learn, we, so we just extending existing Python setup script. You can see code on the right side. On the first line, there is a base Docker image to use, and after that line, it is just like usual Python setup, setup scripts. And furthermore, workspaces are cached in each node so that we could reduce time to prepare our workspace for experiments. Because researchers can specify based occurrences to use, so there is no framework logging. You can use various Docker images like TensorFlow, PyTorch, MXNet, Graphite 2, or etc. 
By giving interactive option hyphen I allows you to see the results of running exceptions interactively just as Docker does. NSML relays the output of running sessions to your local PC so that a session which is running on a cluster could be easily confused as it is running on your local machine. As I told in the beginning of this session, Claire, which I belong to, is a machine learning research team. Research teams could be separated from real-world problems, but we, can, we want our team to be rooted on pr pragmatic engineering. So we thought that it would be great to test models on real-life environments. This is a demo of a web app on NSML web interface. Researchers can their model within these interactive settings. This allows researchers not to be separated from real-world problems. Yeah. This is a web app. Uh, this is a classic unused prediction predictors. This is our demo, which reads input from user's webcam to classify emotions. Actually, we tried to test with our faces, but it failed because the model was trained only with with Western faces, but our faces are not. <laughs> Actually, this is a bad from webcam, but yeah. <coughs> This demo demonstrates to read some movie review text from user uh, sorry for Korean and tries to predict its movie review score. Yeah. Yeah. We hope that we could suggest a new workflow for machine learning. Sharing data set and explaining workspace makes collaboration very easy and leaderboard can introduce some competitive environment. Leaderboard of NSML is designed to be Kaggle-like. NSML brings Kaggle into your lab and your company. This can be used for benchmarking against previous state-of-the-art baselines. And continuously interactive machine learning can streamline the whole process. <laughs> Researchers with proper permissions can download any data sets, sessions, and models very easily. They can reproduce from downloading the model, and it is very easy to modify the model with the new ideas. When you see, it's just pulling the already submitted model, and you can just rerun the model. NSML provides data-centric research environment, so researchers can collaborate with each other by comparing their models on web interface. Because it is a standardized and quantified model, a quantified environment, so that it would enhance the performance of the entire team. Furthermore, it would be a nice starting point for AutoML. Quantitative model analysis makes ML workflow as a gym of AutoML. We could implement a recently published demise population based AutoML by just writing some Python scripts to find <coughs> the proper learning rate in scheduling. Continuously, continuously interactive machine learning means model, your models are continuously interacted into servers. State of, a, state of the art model is automatically served at specific endpoints like uh, REST or gRPC. If someone has submitted a new model which is surpassed the pre uh, previous OTA, model will replace its previous model. So, what you will have is an ever improving machine learning API. Okay, this is uh, all what I prepared for today. NSML will be open sourced and we are adding more features like distributed preprocessing and AutoML. Thank you. Actually, you, you can register for the MSM Alpha on this address. If you have some questions, please come by our poster because this is my first time for
I'm <laughs> quite shy to answer your questions directly here. <laughs> Let's talk later. <laughs> Instead of asking questions, I think. Thank you. I think it would be good idea, good, good idea to scan this QR code to participate in this ARPA. Thank you.